Hey guys, this video is brought to you by Froala, a beautiful lightweight WYSIWYG HTML editor written in JavaScript. Froala editor's rich editing capability provides both simple and complex features for all types of use cases. It is easy to integrate into your existing tech stack, and I really enjoy using this editor in my projects since they have extensive documentation filled with tons of examples and code snippets I can easily reuse. Getting started with Froala is simple and very intuitive. So head on over to froala.com to download your free trial today. Hey, what's up? It's John from Coding Addict, and welcome to another JavaScript Nuggets video where we cover nifty JavaScript topics that will come in handy when working on various JavaScript apps. And today we're going to cover array.from. We'll start from the most basic examples, and then at the very end, set up pagination using array.from. As far as the general info, one gotcha is that array.from is not on a prototype. So essentially, if I set up some kind of array, I cannot do like with filter and map, where I just say array name and then dot and then from. No, it's not on the prototype. So we just need to start with array and from. So we need to start with a keyword and then dot from. And then, of course, we can set up the functionality. Now, when we think about array dot from, I want you to think of the fact that it returns a array object from an object with a length property or a iterable object. And in other words, array dot from turns array like or array ish into array. And when we talk about array like or array ish, we talk about string, node list, set, and all that good stuff. So Let's start with a very, very basic example where we have the string. Now the variable is Udemy. And if we call array.from, you'll notice that we're going to get back an array where every item, so essentially every letter, is going to be an item in the array. So let's go here with console log. And in order to speed this up, I'm just going to console log right away, array.from. And then I'm passing in the Udemy. And what you should see in a console is that every letter in my string, of course, right now is an item in my array. So that is array dot from in action, where we take array like or array ish and turn it into array. All right. So that was basic example. Now let's work on something more interesting, where we have three paragraphs in the index HTML. Or you're not, I said paragraphs, actually, they're probably heading to. Yep, they are heading twos. And what I would want is to select all of them. So that's easy. We just go with query selector. And then I would want to find the one that has the text content of the person. However, we know that once we select them, the heading twos, what we're going to get back is the node list. And it is array like, meaning we can, for example, call for each, but we cannot call filter directly. So, of course, we would need to use array dot from. So I'll comment this out just so it stays for your reference, but I'm going to select right now all my heading twos. So I'm going to come up with some kind of variable and I'm going to call this text and that is equal to a document and then query selector all. Of course, since I'm selecting multiple instances and then I'm selecting the text, that is the class name. And then if I console log the text, I can clearly see in my console that it is a node list. And again, if I would want to run find method on node list, it wouldn't work. Okay. So what we would need to do is set up new array using the array dot from. So we go with const, then new text, and I'm going to go with array, then dot from, and then I'll pass in my text. So now if we console log my new text, of course, it is an array. And since it's array, we can call every method on earth every method that I would want. I can call against this array. And what I'm going to do is just chain at the end here, where I'm going to say find. And then if the item text content is person, then please return this item. So we go with text and content. And if that is equal to a person, what we should see in the new text is that one heading two with a text content of person. And there it is. Now we're successfully calling array methods against the node list, which is turned into array using array.from. 
And then finally, let's take a look at the pagination example. Now, before we begin, let me just tell you that we'll take a look at the general setup. Eventually, I will add a project, a pagination project, where we fetch GitHub users and then, or I'm sorry, I think these were followers. Anyway, so we're fetching some kind of list. In this case, it was 100 followers. And then we just paginate them here. More essentially, we can take a look at the next page, previous page, and of course, select pages along the way. Again, the general idea is going to be exactly the same. But of course, in this case, we also have the UI, we also have buttons. What I'm about to show you is just a general setup, how we would create pagination using array that from. So for now, let me comment out this one. So I have a clean console, but it stays for your reference. And now let's take a look at how we can create an array using array dot from if we pass in the object with a length property. So we go here with const and then I'll call this items. And then again, we go with array and then dot from. And like I said, we pass in the object. Object must have the length property and we need to set some kind of value. So in this case, since I would want to create 120 items, I'm just going to pass in 120. So what you should notice is that we have an array. Yep, but all the items are defined. But we have an array with 120 items. That is already a good start. So what's really cool about array dot from that as a second argument, we can pass in a callback function that is called against every item, just like we have, for example, with math filter, and all those good methods. So in here, I go with a function like so. And what I would want is to return something from this function. And whatever I'm going to return from the function is going to be placed in that item. So just like with callback functions for map and filter, what we have is the index. So I don't care about the first item over here. What I care about is the index. So in this case, notice since I'm creating array from completely empty object, meaning it just has the length property, I don't care about this first item. Normally, when you pass in some kind of array that does have items, which by the way, we'll take a look at in a second, then of course, what it means that we're accessing that item. Now, in our case, since we created from scratch, we'll just get the undefined and I don't care about them. That's why in here, I just pass the underscore. And then I say, I'm just looking for the index, my second argument. And what I would want is to return from this callback function an index. And once I save, of course, what I have right now is the array with numbers, because now I'm grabbing the index. So I have 120 items. But since I'm starting with zero, of course, my last item will be 119. But I have 120 items in my array. And as you can see, all of them are numbers since we got the index from the callback function. And then whatever we are returning is placed inside of this items. Okay, awesome. Then I would want to come up with, well, how many items per page I would want. So in this case, I went with 10. But in a second, I'll show you that once we're done with our functionality, it doesn't really matter. You can always change it. And we'll get still the same results. So we're going to go here with const and I'm going to go with items per page, because it's just going to be a bit easier. And I'm going to set it up equal to 10. And now, of course, I would want to calculate, well, how many pages do I have? And in this case, I would want to divide the length of my items array by whatever items I have per page. So we're going to go here with const. And then I'm going to call this pages. And for time being, let's just go with items that length divided by items per page. Now, what's really interesting is that if everything is set up correctly, technically, we should be getting and by the way, it is pages, we should be getting around numbers. And of course we do, because I have 120 items. And then I divided by 10. However, what if I change this around? What if I say that I would want to divide this by 14? So I'll save it and notice how I'm getting back this value where I have 8.5. Now, 
can I really show 8.5 pages? No, of course, what I would want is to show nine pages. And then in that ninth page, there are going to be remaining of the items, whether that's two, three or whatever. So essentially, once I divide 120 by 14, I'll have some full pages where I have full 14 items. But then the last one probably is not going to have 14 since I have 8.5. So in that page number nine, I would want to show rest of the items. So where I'm going with this, that instead of having 8.5 pages, what I would want is to always, always round this up. So I'm going to pass in math ceiling. And that way, if I have some kind of decimal number, I'll always have that round number at the end. Awesome. And now what I would want is to create an array of arrays where I'm going to have the pages. So if we have items and it has 120 items in my array, then of course, what I would want is to set up some kind of array that has my pages. So it will have nine arrays and each of that array is going to contain some items from the items array. Okay, too many items, but hopefully it makes sense. So let's create a new variable first. So I'm going to go with const and then new items. And that is equal to array dot from again, we use the same method. And now of course, when we talk about the length, again, I'm creating a new array from the object. And I'm doing that by passing in the length property. And then what is the length in this case? Well, it is equal to pages. Because as this is changing, of course, the array of new items also will be changing. So that's a start. And then the next thing, again, we have this callback function, where we go with underscore, because we don't care about the actual item. And we go with index. Okay, awesome. And what is the functionality right now? Well, what I would want is to create array of arrays. So I could start by multiplying whatever is my index with items per page. Correct. So as you can see, first time you're going to get zero since index, of course, is zero. And then once we multiply more 14, that is going to be zero. But then the next time index will be one then two then three. And this value will be changing. So what I'm going to say is a new variable. And I'll call this start. And I'll say index multiplied by items per page, like so. Okay, again, first time it's going to be zero. And then every time it's going to increase, since the index is increasing, and then we're multiplying by items per page. Okay, and now what we can do is use slice method to start grabbing from the items array. And the way it's going to look like I'm going to go with temp items, and that one is equal to items dot slice. And here we need to pass in two arguments, the start point and the end point. So what we're doing with the slice, we're calling it against the items. And I'm going to say, you know what, grab me items starting with whatever is the argument, and then ending with what is the end argument. So in here, if I go with start, so of course, in the beginning, it's going to be zero, and then start plus items per page. So start plus items per page. And as you can see, as our index is going to be increasing, so will our start. Correct. So again, first time it's zero. Next time it is going to be 14. Because index is going to be one. So in here, we'll start with 14. And then 14 plus items per page, which is 14. So as you can see, each and every iteration is going to increase by 14. And then each and every iteration, we are going to grab 14 items from the items array. And we're going to do that using the slice method. And, and the result, of course, is going to be that we're going to return those temp items. So for each iteration that I have in the pages, which should be nine, correct, since the length of my array is nine, I'm going to grab the items from my items array. And if I change this around, and if I say new items, you'll notice that in the console, we have array of arrays. So we start the first time where we grab 14 items, we start with zero, and then all the way to 13, 
because when it comes to slice, we include the first argument, but not the second one. So we're going up to whatever is the number. So since in this case, number was 14, we're going up to the index of 13. And then notice how the second time we're starting with 14. Why? Well, again, index is one in a second iteration, since arrays are zero index based. And then of course, we multiply our index, which is one by 14, which is the items per page. And then of course, we start at 14. But still, this one doesn't change, meaning we just add 14 plus the 14 plus the items per page. So again, we end up with 28. But 28 is not included. And then of course, we get the next one, next one, next one. And hopefully it makes sense. So if I'll change this around, for example, to eight items per page, of course, what should happen? Well, first of all, we should have more pages, correct? Because we're dividing length by items per page. And also the value is going to change. So now, of course, we'll have 15 pages, but the items in those pages are going to have different values. So now we start with zero, then seven, then eight, 16, 24, and all the way to 112. And notice how the last one in this case actually is a full array. Hopefully that makes sense. That was array.from. Again, there's going to be a project coming up where we're going to use array.from to set up nice pagination where we get the GitHub followers and we'll display dynamically the buttons. We're going to have pre button, next button, and also a specific button for the page where as you click on a button, notice we get the items that are stored in that page.